Hey everybody, welcome to day two of machine learning intro for the app development class. Uh, last time, we talked a little bit about my plan to build an image classifier to make it so that I can identify from a photo what meal I am looking at. So is it breakfast, lunch, or dinner based purely from an image uh, that I provide an image classifier. And an image classifier is a kind of machine learning algorithm whose job it is to is to take an image and classify it. I need a much better description for how that works. So I'm hoping that uh, maybe through today's examples, we'll have a better idea of what exactly that means. Uh, so we talked last time about training data and uh, testing data and the difference between them. Training data is the data that you give a machine learning algorithm to try and teach it uh, your different categories. And so you say this these are pictures of what I mean by breakfast, these are pictures of what I mean by lunch, and these are dinner. And so from those photos, you're trying to get the algorithm to understand what those three things are. And your testing data is the data you provide that then allows your machine learning algorithm to be tested to see how well does it understand what these three categories are. And that's all part of the process of um, uh, training the algorithm. So we have to collect our data first, and so that's why our first day was all about collecting. And today we're going to talk a little more about the details of training. Um, and so what you should have done last time at the end was create a folder that has uh, one section that has your training data for your categories. I'm doing breakfast, lunch, and dinner, uh, so that's why I have those three folders um, as you can see here, uh, but I gave you the choice to be able to do some other categories if that's what you're going to uh, do for this project. So whatever your categories are, you should have created those folders with uh, training data and also your testing data. You should have 60 pictures that are your training data and 15 uh, photos that are your, your testing data uh, for your particular project. Um, and hopefully at this point you have shared that directory with me. Um, and I'm going to share these with the class so that we have a bunch of different data sets to play around with moving forward. Um, and this is the process that we went through. So last time we talked about collecting. Today we're going to talk a little bit about training and a little bit about evaluating and trying to understand the relationship between those two. Um, but the basics, the the idea of what we're going to really be doing today is trying to train a machine learning algorithm and you're going to do that using tools in Xcode. Um, before we get into this part, um, I want to use an analogy to try to understand a little bit about the subtle pieces of what goes into designing a data set, designing a training set and a testing set for a machine learning algorithm. And so uh, as a teacher, I have a lot of experience in training students to do different things and uh, I've learned a lot about what makes students mad and so I'm going to give you some situations that I know I as a teacher have done um, that I know in the past have made my students mad so here are some examples um, I want you to imagine that there are uh, three topics that uh, I might be teaching in a given lesson so let's call them A, B, and C and so a student will consistently ask what's going to be on the test. And so I want you to imagine the teacher says, uh, on the test, you're going to need to give me back A, B, and C. And so on the test, you give back exactly what the teacher tells you, A, B, and C. And the teacher says, great job. Now, that is not a great test. That is not a great classroom. That is the teacher asking you to just regurgitate what you have learned in the same order and exactly the same information, exactly the same form. That's not what we're talking about. And I have had students who um, maybe don't get mad in this situation, but they get bored. Like they say, all I'm doing is regurgitating. I know when I had teachers who did this uh, growing up, I didn't see the point. Why am I just memorizing what this person is telling me uh, to memorize and spitting it back? It doesn't mean much. Okay, so that's situation one. Situation two is you ask what's on the test and the teacher says, a, B, and C. And so you do exactly what uh, what happened in the last situation. You regurgitate A, B, and C. And the teacher says, no, no, no. No, 
I was telling you A, B, and C were what were on the test, but I wasn't telling you exactly that those were the answers. I needed you to understand A, B, and C. Um, on the test, I'm going to switch up the order. I'm going to change it a little bit. And initially, that can make students mad because it's, it's something different. It's not exactly what they were expecting. Um, so it's important to think as a teacher, as someone trying to train students or a machine learning algorithm, you want to make sure that you're not oversimplifying when you tell your student or the algorithm what it is you're going to have them do. This will make a little more sense with more information in the context of machine learning in a little bit. Okay, the next thing. The student says what's going to be on the test. The teacher says study A, B, and C. Okay, the student does that and then the teacher throws on topic D. You didn't study topic D. It's why would you possibly put topic D on the test? And the teacher might say, well, it was kind of important or uh, I knew I needed to put it on there. Um, and, and so this makes students mad. Understandably, this is not a good thing to do. So when you're teaching somebody something, if you should have clear expectations of what it is you are testing them for. So you want to make sure that the information you give in the beginning about what is important relates to what it is you're going to ultimately test them for. Again, this relates to machine learning. Very, uh, it's very important, and so we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, so one more situation, uh, same scenario, but uh, in this case, you study A, B, and C, and the teacher decides in the end, I'm only going to test you on C. And so there are a couple ways to respond. The student might just say, why did I waste all that time learning A and B? And there could be lots of reasons why you spend time learning A and B anyway. But um, another thing that's kind of uh, kind of a downside to this situation is that the teacher doesn't really know how well you understand A and B. If those were important things for you to learn, you might want to have that information about how well you understand topics A and B. So when you give information about something that you're supposed to learn, you ultimately want to be able to evaluate all of the different things that uh, relate to whatever it was you were trying to teach. Okay, so this is a little bit abstract. I'm basing it in student experience. Let's relate this to our meal problem um, that I'm trying to solve. And so here's the idea. So let's say that I am uh, training you, training an algorithm, and I tell it croissant, egg, bagel. And I test it with the exact same information, croissant, egg, and bagel. I get 100%. That by itself is not a great and robust, uh, robustly trained algorithm because I'm just asking the machine learning algorithm to spit back what I gave it. We want to make our machine learning algorithms flexible. We don't want to have to test it using the same information uh, that we use to train. So this is the idea behind making sure that the testing data is different from your training data. A second situation. You give a croissant, egg, and bagel, but you test it using bagel, egg, and croissant. Now, if you are training a machine learning algorithm and you just give it those three examples, it is unlikely that the machine learning algorithm is going to be able to identify those other three correctly, simply because you haven't given very much information. You have not given enough practice in order for the machine learning algorithm or the student to truly understand the big picture. What is a croissant? What is an egg? What is a, a bagel? If you're trying to teach something what breakfast is. So you need to be giving it plenty of data. Lots of data in different forms that allows the algorithm to pick out what is it that makes something a croissant? What is it that makes it an egg? What is it that makes it a bagel? So that it makes it flexible enough that when you give it these uh, rotated images, possibly of different sizes, the algorithm is able to handle it. So that's why it's really important um, that you try to give enough training data, thinking about the student situation, enough practice problems or enough practice essays to get the gist of what it is you're trying to understand so that then when you test for those things, you have enough flexibility and enough uh, experience to be able to do well. 
Okay, the next thing. You train on croissants and bagels and eggs. You do all of that, but then you test on something totally different. Think back to that really disappointed student. That's not a good situation. You want to make sure that your test is representative of what you taught your algorithm. So if I only give pictures of breakfast, I, can't, I want to make sure that I have pictures in my testing set um, that are of breakfast, because that's all I've trained it for. If I want my classifier to be able to recognize breakfast and lunch and dinner, I need to make sure that I am testing from all three of those groups. Um, okay, and so last situation, if I have these as my training sets, okay, but on the right-hand side, you see that I have kind of a biased testing set. I am testing two of my pictures over there have rice in them, and only one of my uh, examples in the training set has rice. So my testing set is not really representative of what I have taught my algorithm. So just keeping these things in mind is kind of a, a, a good idea. So some general rules of thumb as you put together your test sets. You want to, the, the general rule is you want to challenge your image classifier, but you want it to be successful. So you want to give it enough variety, uh, enough variety in your training set so that the algorithm is able to figure out what are the characteristics of your categories that you're trying to teach it to recognize. Um, make sure that you have a balance between your, your categories um, within your training set. So don't give a whole bunch of breakfast, don't give 40 breakfast and only 10 lunch and 10 dinner. I've made the recommendation to have uh, I think 20 of each category, so I balanced it. Same thing goes for your testing set. So for your testing set, try to roughly have it be a balance between your different categories um, so that you have um, uh, you're measuring how well your, uh, your classifier performs. And the final thing is, again, this is about being challenging, but um, not too challenging. You want to make sure your testing set represents the elements that are in your training set. So make them similar, but not exactly the same. You don't want your classifier to regurgitate back exactly what you give it. Okay, so with all of this, let's actually get to what I'm going to ask you to do. And this, this part is actually pretty simple because Xcode um, or the Xcode tool that you're going to be using, which is called uh, CreateML, is uh, really good at essentially um, crunching through the data and uh, training the classifier. So you, once you've set this up, it's just going to work. Um, so you're going to balance your training and testing sets if you haven't already done that. And then I'm about to show you uh, the steps that you need to follow in order to train the image classifier. Um, and in the end, you're going to get a window that says how well your classifier did. I want you to just send me an email that has a screenshot of that. So let's get started with the process of actually uh, training a, an image classifier. Okay, so here is my desktop, and you can see my two folders of data, testing data and training data. So this is all ready to go with uh, five uh, in each testing category and 20 images in each training category. And I have my three training categories and my three testing categories. So it's balanced, it's ready to go. So I'm gonna open up Xcode. Number one. Um, but instead of actually opening a project here, I'm going to go up to this menu. I'm going to go to Open Developer Tool, and I'm going to go to Create ML. And so I'm going to create a new document here. I'm going to create an image classifier. That's the kind that I want to create. Uh, you might be curious to see what else this can do. So you can uh, kind of go through the different things that are uh, possible using this. Um, we're going to do a couple things with these other categories later on. But for right now, we're just going to do an image classifier. Hit next. I'm going to name it um, meal classifier. And we'll just leave this description here 
Um, we could make it a little more specific later on. We're not going to worry about that now. Okay, and we'll save it right here. And so what's really neat about this is that because we've organized our data already, this is ready to go. So um, I'm going to go to this part for my training data. I'm going to select my files. And I'm just going to grab this entire folder and put it in. And because of the way I've organized this, it's ready to go. I can do the same thing with my testing data. Grab my testing data folder, open it up. And you can see that it's counted up the correct number of items here, 60 items, 15 items there. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about what this, what this does and how it will help. You don't need to do any of this right now, though, um, because we want to just use the training data as we've provided it to the algorithm and let the create ML magic um, do what it does. Um, without putting in any of these other settings. So um, let's just start the training process. So you can see at this stage that the training is completed and it happened pretty quickly, only nine seconds here. And based on how it, it did this so far, it looks like it's actually getting everything right, um, which for machine learning is a little bit troubling. You, you don't usually expect to see a perfect result um, even after you have trained across all of your data. That usually means maybe you've made your testing a little bit too easy. But let's Let's see if we can get a little more detail into what this model is doing. So if I click here on the model, um, I can actually go into some of the, the testing data and see what the model puts out. So let's grab this. Um, let's actually do this so that we can see the, the data, see the pictures. So we'll go to breakfast. And let's grab this image, how about uh, this one right here. And let's see what it says. So I'll drag this in. And notice that this says that, that with that image, this is breakfast with 95% confidence. It is really confident that that one is breakfast. Let's try this one now. Again, 95% confidence that that is breakfast. But notice that it says with 5% confidence that this might also be lunch, which is interesting. So something about that one is is saying that it could possibly also be lunch. Let's try a different one. 100% confidence that that is breakfast. Let's try uh, some dinner pictures, some of these things. So sliding that in there, 100% confidence that that is, that that is dinner. Um, and uh, let's choose just one more. Let's take this sandwich, okay, 100% confidence. So notice that with a couple of these, it's not sure. It's pretty sure that this is breakfast, but it says it might also be lunch. And so part of the reason that I wonder about this being lunch is see that piece of bread there? So the machine learning algorithm might be saying that if there's bread in there, it's likely, it's, it's possible that that's going to be lunch instead. Because this one, it's 100% confident. This one is also saying that this is 100%, this is, uh, 95% confident that it's breakfast, but it sees that bread in there and says that bread is a signal that it might be lunch. So you'll notice that we, um, the machine learning algorithm isn't 100% sure about every single one of these. So anyways, this is what I want you to do. I want you to uh, try a few of these, and I want you to ultimately take a little screenshot of, uh, let's go back to this here, go to the training page. Um, and just take a screenshot of this and send it my way. And that'll be it for what I'm asking you to do today. All right. Have a great day, everybody.